Hello, I am Flash Isaac. This is Flash Lenas. You are now watching More Than 20 Days to Jam, a series containing more than 20 episodes which covers all the topics in Jam syllabus. Each episode comprises detailed class, questions, and homework. The questions and homework are from the Flash Lenas Jam application. This makes the app a requirement for this class. Visit Google Play Store or flashlearners.com to get the app. Do you have trust issues? Reach me on any of my social handles for activation guide or inquiries. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to take off. This is episode 15 of the kinetic theory of matter and gas laws. And we shall be ending the class or the topic in this episode. Now, Graham's law of diffusion told us that or states that the rate of diffusion or effusion of any gas is inversely proportional to the square root of the molar mass or to the square root of the vapor density, which means the higher the mass of a gas, the lower the rate of diffusion. And the smaller the mass of a gas, the higher the rate of diffusion. The rate of diffusion is inversely proportional to the square root of density. And as the density increases, rate of diffusion will reduce. As the density reduces, rate of diffusion will increase. From here, we see that the rate R1 over R2 is equals to the square root of M2 over the square root of M1. That brings us to the relationship between relative molecular mass and vapor density. Vapor density is the weight of, weight of vapor or gas compared to weight of equal volume of air. So the weight of vapor or the weight of gas, when you compare it to the weight of equal volume of air, that is the vapor density. And ladies and gentlemen, relative molecular mass is equal to 2 times vapor density. Mass is 2 times vapor density. If I give you vapor density, to find mass, multiply the vapor density times 2. If I give you vapor density to find relative molecular mass, divide the vapor density by 2. That is the relationship between relative molecular mass and vapor density. This will help you in the future in chemistry under empirical and molecular formula and other topics. So take note of this relationship. So Graham's law of diffusion is what tells us the relationship between relative molecular mass and vapor density. Molar volume the volume of gas at standard, the volume of one mole of gas at standard temperature and pressure is 22.4 gm cube. And atomicity is the number of moles in one molecule of an element. I told you earlier that atoms, they don't exist independently. They exist as molecules. And molecules are made up of two or more atoms or even one atom. Chlorine gas exists as Cl2. This is one molecule of chlorine gas. And one molecule of chlorine gas contains two chlorine, two atoms of chlorine. So this is diatomic. Oxygen, O2, is diatomic. One molecule of oxygen contains two atoms of oxygen, which means the mass of one molecule of chlorine is um, 35.5 times 2. The mass of one molecule of oxygen is 16 times 2, the molar mass times 2, since one molecule contains two atoms. Ozone is triatomic or polyatomic. Ozone has three molecules of oxygen. The mass of ozone will be 16 times 3. Argon just has one atom. It's monoatomic. Nitrogen gas is diatomic, N2, which is 14 times 2. This is the mass of one molecule of nitrogen. Therefore, looking at all these, one molecule of chlorine will diffuse slower than one molecule of oxygen because it has a bigger mass. That is atomicity. Next, we shall be dealing with our major focus today is the remaining parts. That is law of partial pressure. And I've talked about Graham's law. We shall solve questions under Graham's law as well. Then there is another gas law, which is pressure law. It says that Pressure is directly proportional to temperature when volume is constant. Taking a look at 
Boyce law, Boyce law kept temperature constant. Charles law kept pressure constant. Pressure law is now comparing pressure and temperature and keeping volume constant. That makes a lot of sense. So if pressure is directly proportional to temperature, P1 over V1 is equals P2 over V2. And for Charles law, V1 over T1 is equals V2 over P2. This is pressure law. And that is law of partial pressure. That thing did a lot on the atoms. Then other gas law, that thing is still doing a lot. He said that the total pressure of gas is equals the partial pressure of each of the gases making up. Okay, let's put it this way. He said if we have gases here, let's say this is gas A, this is gas B, and this is gas C. The total pressure exerted by this gas is equals the partial pressure of the individual gas. So if you, if we have three gas here, the partial pressure of this plus the partial pressure of this and the partial pressure of this is the total pressure. If you have another gas B, the total pressure is each of the partial pressure of the gases combined. If you have only two gases, the total pressure is partial pressure of A plus partial pressure of B. That is that is law of partial pressure. And if total pressure is sum of individual partial pressure. What is partial pressure? The partial pressure of any gas is the more fraction of the gas times the total pressure. What is more fraction of the gas? If I tell you that we have three gases, okay, I used, I brought out this as a perfect example. A gaseous mixture is made up of three moles of neon, two moles of argon, and one mole of helium. If the gas mixture exerts a pressure of 18 atm, that means the gas mixture total pressure is equals 18 atm. Find partial pressure of each gases and show that total pressure is sum of individual partial pressure. The gases are neon, argon, and helium. If you notice, these gases they do not react, and that is the condition for that is law of partial pressure, provided that these gases. They don't react with themselves. That is the condition. If you have gas mixtures, and this remember in mixtures, the components don't react with themselves. Mixtures are physically combined. When you have gas mixtures, meaning the components of the mixture, they don't react with themselves. That is the condition for that is law of partial pressure. If that holds, it means that the total pressure is sum of individual partial pressure. Here we have three gases. One, neon. Let's call this N E, and it is three moles of neon. Argon A R O, two moles. Helium H E, one mole. So, what is the partial pressure of each gas? The partial pressure of gas A, in this case, gas A is neon, gas B is argon, and gas C is helium. The partial pressure of gas A, which is neon, partial pressure of neon is equals the more fraction of neon times total pressure of neon. And what is the more fraction of neon? More fraction of neon is how many moles we have in neon over the total number of moles. The number of moles of neon is 3 over total number of moles of all the gases is 3 plus 2 plus 1, that is 6. six. So this is equals 1 over 2. So the more fraction of a gas is the more of that gas over the total mole of all the gases. And the more of neon is 3. Total mole of the 3 gases or the 3 mixture is 3 plus 2 plus 1, that is 6. And the more fraction of neon is 1 over 2. Therefore, partial pressure of neon is the more fraction, which is 1 over 2, times the total pressure, which is 18. The more fraction of argon will simply be 2, which is the more of argon, over 6. That is total more. 2 over 6 is 1 over 3. 1 over 3 times 18 is the partial pressure of argon. For helium, 1 more, 1 over 6 is the more fraction of argon. And 1 over 6 times 18, the total pressure, that is the more fraction of argon. So if you are looking for partial pressure of argon, of helium is the more fraction of helium over the total pressure times the total pressure 18. 
the more fraction of uh, neon is more the impartial pressure of neon is more fraction of neon than the total pressure and if you add everything from here one over two over six that is one over three times eighteen one over six times eighteen this is for argon this is for helium if you add the result of all this together you get the total pressure which is eighteen that shows that total pressure is equal to sum of partial pressure so this is basically everything you need to know about Dalton's law of partial pressure. If you are given each of the partial pressure, the total pressure is adding the partial pressure. If you are asked to look for partial pressure of a gas, it is the more fraction of the gas than the total pressure. And if you are the more fraction is the number of more of that gas over the total number of more. That this covers everything you should know about Dalton's law of partial pressure. And remember, the law holds if the gas mixture or the gases they don't react with themselves. This question says hydrogen diffused through a porous plug A four times as fast as oxygen, B twice as fast as oxygen, C thrice as fast as oxygen, and D at the same speed. In this case, we are comparing the rate of diffusion of hy hydrogen and oxygen and O. Remember. From Graham's law of diffusion, the rate of arrow 1 over arrow 2 is equals the square root of m2 over square root of m1. m2 will come before m1 because it is an inverse relationship. Arrow 1 is inversely proportional to m1. Arrow 2 is inversely proportional to m2. Here, arrow 1 is rate of diffusion of hydrogen. Arrow of H over arrow 2 arrow of oxygen is equals the mass of oxygen is 16 but since we are dealing with oxygen gas and one molecule of oxygen gas contains two atoms of oxygen so the mass of one molecule of oxygen gas is 16 times 2 this is 32 grams 32 grams over the mass of hydrogen is 1 and hydrogen molecule has two hydrogen atoms Therefore, the molar mass of hydrogen is 2. So this is 2. This is H2. H2. Mass is 1 times 2. Oxygen, O2. Mass is 16 times 2. This is the same thing as arrow H over arrow O is equals square root of 32 over 2. That is the same mathematically. So rate of hydrogen over rate of oxygen is equals 32 over 2 is 16. So this is 16. Therefore, square root. Square root of 16 is 4. Arrow H over arrow naught is equals 4. Therefore, cross multiplying, arrow H is equals 4 arrow O. Arrow O will be arrow H over 4. That is 1 over 4 of ROH. So, the rate of diffusion of oxygen is 1 over 4 of the rate of diffusion of hydrogen, which means hydrogen diffuse 4 times as fast as oxygen, because ROH is 4 times ro naught. Why ro naught is 1 over 4 times ROH? Option A is the correct option. So, ladies and gentlemen, there are questions under Darcy's law of partial pressure, under Graham's law of diffusion, in the flash in jump app. Go to chemistry, choose that particular topic, and see the questions there. Solve as many questions as possible. If you have any issue, reach me on any of my social handles. I will answer them so long they are from the app. Activate for your own good. See you in the next episode.